Hi, this is Dawn from Ninja Bunny Crochet. Today, I'm going to show you how to do this microwave bowl cozy. This particular one has been used quite a bit. I made these for my husband and he just absolutely loves them. So what I did is I used 100% cotton yarn and the color, the blue color is peaches and creams. Um, cotton yarn it's called aquamarine it was a 2.5 ounce ball it was 120 yards um, it's a worsted weight four yarn the multicolor yarn is premier home cotton it was a 2.1 ounce ball 105 yards I made two ball cozies out of the yarn out of these balls I had a little bit of the blue left and I had a lot of this multicolor left so if you uh, decide to get the same type of yarn you will have a lot of the multicolored left you don't have to use this this brand yarn you can use any um, brand four ply uh, excuse me four weight worsted weight cotton yarn you do want to use cotton yarn 100% cotton yarn because of putting it in the microwave any type of acrylic yarn is going to melt or possibly catch fire in your microwave now again you also don't want to put this like in the microwave for an extended period of time long enough to heat up your soup or heat up your leftovers is enough time that it can be in the microwave but i wouldn't recommend putting it in the microwave for an extended period of time so let's get started on making the ball cozy. Now today I'm going to use a little bit different color yarn. I have right here, I, ha I already took my label off, but I do have the label right here. I'm going to use Lily Sugar and Cream, and the color is called Rose Pink. And the, uh, the multicolor I'm going to use today is Premier Home Cotton, and this color is called blueberry speckle um, I used a five millimeter H crochet hook let's get started with the ball cozy but first if you like my videos please hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of my tutorials now let's get started I started with a magic ring now how I make my magic rings is I use I take my yarn in my right hand and I wrap it around the my two fingers on my left hand. So I wrap it around and make this form an X on the back of my hand. I put my hook under the yarn that is uh, closest to my hand, pull up a loop, and do a single do a chain stitch. It's a little bit tight. But that way it holds the loop, it holds the magic ring together. Because we're going to be doing double crochet, I'm going to chain another time. So I'm going to do two chains. You're going to do 12 double crochets into the center of the magic ring. The chain two that you started with was just a builder, so it doesn't count as a stitch. Once you get your 12 double crochets into the magic ring, you're going to first you're going to cinch it up by pulling the, the tail and then you're going to slip stitch into the top first double crochet into the top of it. Once I get my 12 double crochets into my magic ring, I'll meet back up with you so that we can cinch up our our cinch up our magic rings and slip stitch and go on to round two. Okay, I've got my 12 double crochets done and now I'm gonna cinch up that circle. And slip stitch into the top. If you're not sure where that first stitch is, all you gotta do is count back. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So it's right there. This is the stitch you're going to slip stitch into. Okay, 
Then we're going to chain two. Okay, we're going to do a double crochet into the same stitch that you just slip stitched into. We're also going to do a front post double crochet. Front post double crochet is very similar to a double crochet, but what we're doing, instead of doing into the top of the stitch, we're gonna go around the post of the stitch. So you yarn over, go in from the front, and go around the stitch. Pull up your loop and complete your double crochet just like normal. So we're gonna go into our next stitch, into the top of it, and do a double crochet. Then we're also going to do into the same stitch a front post double crochet. So again, yarn over, go in from the front and come out the side, pull up your loop, and go complete your double crochet. Go into the next stitch with a regular double crochet. Pull up some more yarn there, sorry about that. And now we're gonna do a front post double crochet into that same stitch. Now please do that and all the way around to get back to the beginning. Okay, I'm at the end of round two and I'm gonna end with a regular crochet, a regular double crochet and a front post double crochet into the same stitch. You now have 24 stitches and I'm gonna end slip stitch into the first double crochet. Now, as you can see, the hole is starting to open up a little bit on me. All you do is take your tail, pull it a little, pull it tight, and it'll close right back up. After we get another couple rounds on, we can take a yarn, a darning needle or a yarn needle, and we can sew that closed, or you can do it at the end of the project, whichever is easier for you. So now to start round three, we're gonna chain two. Doesn't count as a stitch, just a builder. Double crochet into the same stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. Front post double crochet into the same stitch. You should already see that post already starting to stand up. So. Then you're gonna double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. And then front post double crochet into the same stitch. And that's going to be your repeat all the way around. I'll do that one more time for you. Double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. Regular double crochet onto the top of the stitches. Then you're going to front post double crochet into the same stitch. Okay, then complete this all the way around to get to your back to your first double crochet for round three. Okay, I'm coming up on the end of round three. Last stitch is a front post double crochet, and we have 36 stitches. We're going to end with a slip stitch into the first double crochet. So start round four, we have a chain two. And we're going to double crochet into the first stitch. 
double crochet into the next stitch and double crochet into the next stitch and a front post double crochet into the same stitch and that is our repeat I'll do that one more time for you regular double crochet into the next stitch regular double crochet into the next so that's two stitches and a regular double crochet into the third stitch and into that also into that third stitch you're going to do a front post double crochet into the same stitch so that's your repeat double crochet double crochet double crochet into three stitches and in that third stitch you're also going to do a front post double crochet so please repeat this all the way around to get back to the beginning and you're going to slip stitch into the first double crochet and I will meet you up at the end of this round and coming up on the end of round four we're going to end with a front post double crochet we have 48 stitches slip stitch to the first double crochet to end the round we are done increasing so for round five we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet into the same stitch and single crochet into each stitch around just one single crochet into each stitch please complete this round and I will meet you at the end of round five coming up on the end of round five we still have 48 stitches and we're going to slip stitch to the first single crochet now for round six we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet again in each stitch around but this time we're going to be single crocheting in the back loop only this means this is your back loop this is your front loop so we're going to be single crocheting in this loop only so we're going to do a single crochet in the back loop only in the same stitch we just slip stitched into and then in each stitch around we're going to single crochet in the back loop only what this is going to do it's going to create this little ridge which is going to separate the sides and the bottom or cause the sides to start to fold up around your bowl doesn't necessarily separate them so please single crochet in each stitch back loop only all the way around and I will meet you up at the end of this round I'm at the end of round six doing the last single crochet and when we slip stitch into that first single crochet we're going to go through both loops this time now round seven and round eight are exactly the same so you're going to chain two doesn't count as a stitch and we're going to half double crochet into that first stitch now if you're not sure what a half double crochet is yarn over like you're going to do a double go into the loop into the stitch pull a loop up yarn over and pull through all three stitches all through loops excuse me 
So we're going to half double crochet in every stitch around for round seven and round eight. They're both identical. So if you could please complete round seven and round eight, and I will meet you up at the end of round eight. Coming up on the end of round eight, we're gonna complete our last half double crochet. And we're gonna slip stitch into the first half double crochet. We still have 48 stitches, so complete to complete round nine, we're going to chain one and we're going to half double crochet, excuse me, we're going to single crochet into the first same stitch and we're going to single crochet into each stitch around. So round nine is a repeat of round five. We're just going to single crochet into each stitch around. Please complete this round and I will meet you at the end of round nine when we're going to change colors. We're coming up on the end of round nine. In this last single crochet, we're going to change colors. So we're gonna pull up our loop. We're not gonna complete the single crochet with the pink. We're gonna complete it with the multicolor. Now this might be a little bit awkward if you're not used to changing colors pull it up like this then we're going to slip stitch but make sure you have your working yarn when you grab to go to slip stitch not the tail it's a little awkward to do this on camera it works much easier when you're not trying to do it on camera just like that then chain one and we're going to turn the work Now do not fasten off your main color, in this case the pink, because we're gonna pick that back up once we're done using our multicolor, when we're done with our bobble stitches. So for round 10, we're going to single crochet into the same stitch that we just slip stitched into, and then we're gonna start our bobble stitch in the first stitch. So to do a bobble stitch, you Yarn over, insert your hook into that stitch. So it's a little bit tight, but that's okay. You can get in there. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up another loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over again, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and you'll have five loops remaining on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all five loops. Give a little tug, and then do a single crochet in the next stitch. Do that a couple more times for you. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, two loops left on your hook, yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, three loops left on your hook, yarn over, insert again into the same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two again, four loops left on your hook. One more time, you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over again, pull just through two, five loops left on your hook, yarn over, and pull through three, all five loops. Give a little tug, insert your hook into the next stitch, and do a single crochet. Now you're going to repeat this 
all the way around until you come back to the beginning. Now the reason you have to turn your work to do bobble stitches is because the bobble shows on the on the right side of the work but we have to work it with the wrong side facing us and I will show that I will show you what I mean in just a second when I complete this bobble stitch. Here's the bobble stitches. This is the right side and here's your bobble stitches. And this is the wrong side that you're doing that you're working on. Okay? Please complete this round and I will meet you up at the end of round 10. And at the end of round 10, on the last bobble stitch, you should have 48 stitches still. What you're going to have is 24 bobble stitches and 24 single crochet. We're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet to end the round, chain one, and turn the work. Now to begin round 11, we're going to single crochet in the same stitch, and then we're going to single crochet in the top of the bobble, and single crochet in between the bobble, in that single crochet. And again, on top of the bobble, in between in the single crochet, on top of the bobble, and in between. And you're going to do this all the way around to you begin to you get back to the beginning. So please complete round 11 and I will meet up with you at the end of the round. Okay, we're coming up on the end of round 11, doing that last single crochet, and we're gonna drop the multicolor, and we're gonna pick up our pink to complete that last single crochet. Make sure you have it snug. And we're gonna slip stitch into the, top last, into the first single crochet to complete the round. Now round 12 and round 13 are exactly the same. You're going to start with a chain two and we're going to half double crochet into the same stitch and half double crochet into each stitch around. Please complete round 12 and round 13, and I will meet you up at the end of round 13. I'm at the end of round 13. I've got still 48 stitches. We're going to slip stitch into the first, the top of the first half double crochet, chain one, and to start the last round, round 14, we're going to single in the first in the same stitch and single in each stitch around. Please finish round 14 and I will meet you up at the end of the round. Okay, we're at the end of round 14. We still have 48 stitches and we're going to end the round doing the invisible finish 
and I will show you how to do that. Let's get a darning needle. Make sure I get one that's large enough to use. Take the yarn. Bear with me one second. Here we go. So you're going to snip off your yarn and do not do a slip stip uh, chain one. You're just going to pull it straight up and then we're going to thread our darning needle. Thread it under that first single crochet and then we're going to thread it back under the same stitch so that it looks like another stitch. Then go to the inside of your work and weave your tail under some of the stitches. Make sure you go back and forth a few times in different directions to lock it in place. And that's all there is to it, to doing an invisible finish. There you go. Now you go ahead and you weave in all your ends and your bowl cozy is all finished. You just slip in your bowl and you're ready to go. Here is what the bowl cozy looks like on the bowl when it's all completed. So if you like this tutorial, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.